Did you know that from the beginning of Fox Kids, Margaret Loesch had a plan when it came to the series based off a of Marvel character? She had an order of which series she wanted to come out and what time. X-Men was first, followed by Spider-Man. The others included the Avengers and Daredevil. Although Loesch was not there long enough to see this plan through, in a way, Saban tried to continue with this plan. Although the Avengers we got may not have been what Loesch had in mind. But Saban also had the Fantastic Four and Iron Man in syndication, and the Incredible Hulk on UPN. There was also a planned Captain America series, and the ill-advised Spider-Man Unlimited. Today, however, we are focusing on the combination of Loesch's plan and Saban's continuation of that plan. A show that was always planned to be the third installment of the Fox Kids Marvel Universe. Hello, friends. I am Tunamp with the History of Fox Kids, and today we take a look at the rise and demise of Fox Kids Silver Surfer. Before we get started, I publish content of questionable quality whenever. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Or subscribe anyway, I'm not picky. You can keep up with me on social media or ring that bell to be notified when a new video comes out. With that said, let's do this thing. From the beginning, the Silver Surfer was kind of a happy accident. Created by Jack Kirby in 1966, he and Stan Lee were working on a Fantastic Four comic where the Devourer of Worlds, Galactus, would be introduced. Kirby and Lee would discuss story ideas for the Fantastic Four comic, and then Kirby would draw the scenes that were discussed. However, for this one, he decided to add a man riding a surfboard in space. This wasn't discussed at all. When Lee asked about the character, Kirby thought it would be a good idea for Galactus to have some kind of herald. Lee was skeptical at first, but after hearing Kirby's idea for the surfer, he gave the green light. From then on, the Silver Surfer would be a recurring character in Fantastic Four. He would soon get his own stories, a miniseries, and show up in other comics. The character would become very popular, popular enough to get his own TV series. This TV series showrunner and creator was Larry Brody, a man whose writing credits included the original Hawaii Five-O and Spawn the series. So how did the Silver Surfer TV series go? Let's find out. The story of the series is the struggle of the Silver Surfer, a man turned into a powerful being by the huge threat known as Galactus, the devourer of worlds. This was due to a promise the Surfer made to Galactus to spare his home planet. In turn, the Surfer would guide Galactus to worlds full of energy for him to feed. But after recovering the memories that Galactus took from him, the Silver Surfer rose up and faced off against his master. However, Galactus easily defeats the Surfer and then releases him from his duties. The Surfer tries to return to his home world, but Galactus moves it to another part of the universe. Now the Silver Surfer must travel the universe to find his home. He will meet new friends and make terrible enemies. Essentially, it's a road trip series. Over the years, we've had a few of those. Avatar The Last Airbender is the one that immediately comes to mind. While a lot of things are impressive about this series, and we'll get to them, this is not a fun road trip series. Now don't get me wrong, the worlds and other locations are top notch and fascinating, but there is a slight problem that just drags it down. A lot. Speaking of worlds and locations, let's talk about the animation. This follows in the footsteps of X-Men when it comes to character design. While Spider-Man was smooth and very clean looking, X-Men was a lot darker and had a more grittier look. The lines were thicker and used a lot of shadows. This is the same with the character design of Silver Surfer. If you look closely, you will notice there's a lot of shadow use on the characters. This normally doesn't happen in television animation. Well, not unless the animators are trying to convey some type of emotion. The backgrounds are equally as good as X-Men. Well, the 2D ones anyway. I kind of got a Dragon Ball Z vibe when looking at some of the planets that the Silver Surfer visited. Well, the Barren Wasteland ones anyway. There's a lot of Barren Wasteland planets in this series. 
There were also some jungle planets and some futuristic planets. But there were a lot of planets where the Silver Surfer were fighting in lands where there was nothing. Now we can't talk about the Silver Surfer series without talking about the 3D effects. They were mind-blowing. From the planets to the asteroids to the moons to spaceships. And especially Thanos and Galactus' ships. Including Galactus himself. They are breathtaking. One thing you might notice when the show does the space scenes are the computer animated scenes are just placed on a simple background with maybe some stars and some planets on them. But the combination of the two just works so well. Unlike some of the mixing of the character animations you're directing with the CG stuff. It just looks so odd when the two don't mix. Especially when it comes to the surfer interacting with Galactus. Is it noticeable? Yeah. Does it hurt the series? No. Then it doesn't matter. We now turn our attention to the music of the series. The theme to the Silver Surfer is so epic. It's memorable because of the chorus of singers belting out this operatic chant. I wish I knew what they were singing, but it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, the theme song is kind of drugged down by the visuals. It's just the Silver Surfer flying through space and we have the occasional appearance by Galactus. It kind of feels empty because, well, space is kind of empty. Honestly, if it wasn't for this song, this would be the weakest out of the Marvel themes of the 90s. Well, the first theme of Iron Man and the second theme of Fantastic Four still kind of has a beat though. Wow, those two were so bland! I wish the rest of the series music was as epic as the theme. Honestly, I don't remember any particular piece of music outside of the theme. As with any series, for a person to be invested in the series, your characters have to be interesting, somewhat relatable, fun, but you also have to care about them as well. But after watching The Silver Surfer, the question I constantly asked myself was, this was supposed to replace Spider-Man? Yeah, as amazing as Silver Surfer looks, there is one glaring flaw in the series. I only like three characters. We'll get to them. I guess I'll start with the main character, the Silver Surfer. The character who was born Nolan Rad on the planet of Zenla. He has a girlfriend, Shalaba, and has a best friend named Ramalama Ding Dong. Okay, that last one is made up. But good gravy, those names. Nolan Rad bargains with the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt. I mean, Galactus. Galactus is what I mean. Yeah, get used to that. Yeah, I caught myself switching between the Eater of Worlds and the Devourer of Worlds. So kind of forgive me for that. So Nolan Rad bargains with the Devourer of Worlds, Galactus, to become the Silver Surfer. So Galactus would spare his world. Silver Surfer turns on Galactus. Well, while that all does sound interesting, um, I, I don't want to say it. No, Rocket, I don't want to say it! I talked about your attitude before, Mr. Pibbs. Rocket, I don't like your friend. Fine! I think. The Silver Surfer is boring, and I don't think you are really rocking at all. He could speak English. I get it. Nolan Rad was a pacifist. As the Silver Surfer, he still was using the teachings of Zen La. The problem is, for someone named the Silver Surfer, he isn't interesting. This is made even worse when you hear his inner monologuing all the time. How ironic that I, who have been raised with a devotion to harmony and peace, am being called upon to save the fiercest savages who ever roamed through space. And yet, can any man turn his back on another? I know Spider-Man did the same thing, but Spider-Man also played off the other characters well, especially with his villains. So, maybe Silver Surfer can play off the other characters? Here we have Pip the Troll. He's our comic relief of the series. He's kind of interesting, likable, 
Leaves after three episodes. Leave after three episodes? But, but that was your Sokka! You got rid of your Sokka! Why would you have the Silver Surfer be alone all the time? He needs companions to work off of. Oh look, it's Drax the Destroyer! He's always funny with his odd ways of interpreting things. Let's see if he makes me laugh. So filled am I with sorrow for Mentor that I do not feel ready for anything. I am purposeless, empty. <laughs> Your deepest, darkest secret! <laughs> Ooh, that's a shame. You think we've been spoiled by the Marvel Cinematic Universe versions of these characters? Because Drax in the Silver Surfer is just a doll servant robot. But we also have Nebula and Gamora in the series. Yup, they're there. Honestly, if it wasn't for the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, I would not have given those too much thought and would have viewed them as throwaway characters, especially Nebula. But yeah, there are characters that do stand out more like Ego and Adam Warlock. You have the Skrull and the Kree, the Watchers and others, but the characters in the series that stand out are Galactus, Nova, and Thanos. Galactus is this imposing giant, and the voice they gave him is spot on. Now go, my Silver Surfer. Soon this planet will be drained, and the great hunger will be upon me once more. You truly believe that this is the devourer of worlds. But you also feel sympathetic for the big guy as well. And that's due to his great hunger. Nova is just fun. Although her introduction as Frankie is a little cringy. Sorry, Silverado, but the name's Frankie. Frankie Ray. Nova is just likable anytime she is on screen. And you actually feel her concern for Galactus. Although, I could have done without her constantly calling the Silver Surfer Silverado. Silverado, 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 Silverado. Silly Nova, that's a truck, not a naked bald space surfer. But alas, Nova is only around for three or four episodes and doesn't improve the surfer's award winning personality. Hey! You know what you just did? You made a joke! Impossible. The Silver Surfer does not make jokes. And then we have Thanos. Probably the most interesting character of the series. Sure, he talks to himself. But he also thinks he's having a conversation with the statue of Lady Chaos. Yeah, I know, it's supposed to be death. But, censorship. Thanos is intriguing because he is insane. He tries to control Galactus through the Silver Surfer. Then he goes on a planet-destroying vacation. And then he tries to manipulate time. All the while, he is having what looks to be a one-sided conversation with a statue. I'm assuming we would have gotten more into this if the series hadn't been cancelled. Now, as far as the action is concerned, it's there, but mostly space fighting. Most one-on-one -on -one fights are some aggressor and the surfer trying to stop the fighting, which is kind of a good thing, I guess? But hardly as interesting as the fights with the X-Men and Spider-Man. Especially since the Silver Surfer's thoughts won't shut up. Really, this guy needs someone to talk to. I can understand his wants to find his lost home and his love Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Ha ha ha! Before the comet starts. It's Shalaba. Unleash cosmic power. We'll be right back to Silver Surfer on Disney XD.
on Disney XD. I wonder at what point both Fox, Saban, and the Silver Surfer team knew the show was going to be cancelled. At their upfront conference in 1998, everyone was so excited about the series and Fox Kids also announced the Captain America series. That was in January. The Silver Surfer aired in 1998 from February 7th to May 29th, and after that, nothing. The series went off the air with a lot of assumption to why. There was a lot of speculation to the Silver Surfer's demise. Most of what I found were bloggers and websites that didn't show where they got their information from. It's kind of the reason why I don't like using Wikipedia, IMDB, blog posts, and opinion pages, and prefer to use news reports, articles, and interviews from the series creators as sources. So now we have to take a look at the reason why the series was cancelled. Honestly, there are so many different ideas on why Silver Surfer never went beyond the first season. And most of them aren't credible. If you want my opinion, I think it's because the show is boring and got over the kids' heads. But alas, I have no proof of that. So I narrowed it down to three reasons. Let's start with the most popular, yet least plausible. The Silver Surfer was cancelled due to Marvel's bankruptcy and Marvel could not afford to make the second season. May I direct your attention to a comment posted on IMDb by the showrunner of Spider-Man the Animated Series, John Semper, on this subject. Marvel's bankruptcy had nothing to do with these shows being ended. Marvel didn't own or produce those shows. Spider-Man the Animated Series was produced by a brand new company named Marvel Films Animation. Read the logo at the end of the show. The company was created to produce the show, and New World Entertainment in conjunction with Fox. X-Men and Silver Surfer were produced by Saban, very much still in the business, as would have been Captain America. And that makes sense. The companies that produce the shows are the ones spending the money to make them. Marvel Films, Saban, Sony. Marvel licensed their characters out to different networks and animation production companies, and the finished product is owned by these companies. Why do you think that when Disney bought Saban Fox Kids, the shows and television rights to X-Men, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Silver Surfer went to Disney instead of Marvel? Why do you think that when Sony lost the rights to produce more episodes of the spectacular Spider-Man, in favor to produce more Spider-Man movies, Disney made the Ultimate Spider-Man series instead of continuing Spectacular Spider-Man. It's because Sony still owned the rights to that version of Spider-Man, even though they can't make any more new episodes. Also, if you're using the Marvel bankruptcy as an excuse, you gotta keep in mind that Silver Surfer started airing during the spring of 98. Marvel's bankruptcy lasted from December of 96 they're close to the start of the new millennium. During that time, Saban produced Spider-Man Unlimited and Avengers United We Stand. You could see how using the bankruptcy excuse is a problem. The second reason I found is Saban and the showrunners of Silver Surfer had creative differences for the second season. This somewhat makes more sense, but not a lot. If the rumors are true, the Silver Surfer was doing fine in the ratings, which is amusing. But during an interview, Jeffrey Cater, a ship designer for the series, said that there was a lot of fighting about the writing. It was between Larry Brody and, well, he didn't say who Brody was fighting with. It may have been with the people at Fox, but that's just speculation. But Brody still managed to crank out eight scripts for the second season of the series. But the third and most likely reason why The Silver Surfer got cancelled is because of legal differences between Saban and Marvel. And the reason why I say that it's the most likely is because this was mentioned on Larry Brody's own website. Unfortunately, that is as far as I can go with the subject without getting into speculation. What were the legal differences? Was it about money? If it was between Saban and Marvel, then it might be about the show itself. Honestly, it could be about anything. And if either party wanted us to know, they would let us know. But according to Brody, the legal differences didn't last long. But the damage was done. Silver Surfer was cancelled. And this also possibly cancelled the upcoming Captain America series. 
You have to remember that the Silver Surfer was cancelled in the May of 1998, and Spider-Man Unlimited and Avengers United We Stand started in October and November of 1999. A good 17 months. The Silver Surfer is a beautiful series with stunning visuals and backdrops. Unfortunately, the main character comes off as bland, and a lot of times annoying with his constant inner monologuing. I don't know if that is the writer's fault as much as the original source material. Maybe it's both. When I first saw this series, I was bored. 20 years later, I'm still bored with it. I wonder if the kids back then were bored with it too. There was so much effort that was put into the look of the show that perhaps no one questioned that maybe they could have given the Silver Surfer a little personality and a fellowship of the, I don't know, surfboard? I know! Fellowship of making the main character interesting. Is the Silver Surfer terrible? No. Does it have its ups and downs? Sure. Personally, I think the series is overrated and is very passable. The Super Surfer proves that great animation and visuals does not hide a bland character. I'm Tunip. Thanks for watching. Coming soon to Fox Kids, soar through the universe with the newest superhero from Marvel Comics. Space, my home. Once a mere man, now he possesses the awesome power, Cosmic. Watch the Silver Surfer. Coming soon to Fox Kids. Take the ride.